In our second lecture every week, we're going to try to shift our focus into the classroom. So in our first lecture, we talk about different aspects of culture. Sometimes we talk about theories and, you know, complicated words that we don't necessarily um, use when we're talking to our students, particularly if they're children. However, there are ways that we can um, integrate those ideas or illustrate certain aspects of culture in our classroom in normal everyday activities. So that's what we're going to mainly be looking at in this second lecture every week. And we're also going to be seeing how you can be a better model of good English for your students. So here are our objectives for today. First, install posters in your classroom. Use pictures for cultural understanding. This is an activity that we're going to uh, look at. And finally, using correct English, being a good model for your students. First up, we're going to be looking at posters. Now, this is a very easy thing to do. Um, it's really easy if you can find a store that has English posters where you can just buy them and put them in your classroom. But the important thing is to make sure that they actually have perfect English. You want to always uh, be exposing your students to proper use of English. So we're going to be looking at posters that have good English expressions, um, that are visually appealing, uh, making them easy for all students to understand, and also that sort of have some hints about cultural differences. And so I really recommend that in your classroom, when you are thinking of what rules you want to have in your class, do consider culture. Uh, it would be a very good experience for your students if you could use rules that reflect the target culture that you are trying to uh, teach the language of. So let's look at this first one. First rule is listen. This is a great rule for any class. Um, I like that it's the first rule and that it is so simple. Second one, keep your hands to yourself. So this means like, you know, don't touch other students. This means you can't hit other students. You can't pinch other students. Keep your hands to yourself. This is very useful for children. This is something my parents always said to me when I was a kid because I had you know, three siblings, and we were always touching, you know, annoying each other, bothering each other. I heard this, you know, hundreds of times. Keep your hands to yourself. So it's a great one that you can uh, say to students. It's also something that they can say to each other. So if some other student is bothering me, right, if a student is bothering another student, then that student can say, hey, keep your hands to yourself. So this is a great one that you can teach to students as well. Third, raise your hand if you have something to say. This very much reflects uh, the American school system, I think, Western education, where everyone should get a turn to speak. Everyone should be able to speak their minds, but we need to do it in an orderly fashion. So we always try to get students to raise their hand if they have th something to say instead of just shouting, teacher, teacher, right? That would never be allowed in most uh, American classrooms. So this is a maybe a cultural difference. You might run your classroom in this kind of orderly way. And if you do, I'm sure your principal will really appreciate it because principals usually don't like really loud classes, right? Next, follow directions. Another very simple, clear, succinct, to the point, follow directions. Works almost all the time. And finally, do your best. Now, on this poster, I think the one um, rule that most reflects American values is this last one, do your best. So this one implies that not everyone has to be number one. Not ev you can't expect everyone to be perfect, but everyone should at least try to be their best. So you don't have to be the best, but you need to the be the best that you can be. Here's another example for you of classroom rules. First, arrive on time. This is very important uh, from a Western point of view. We'll be learning about time differences, perceptions of time, and how they vary from culture to culture in a week or two. So you might think back to this poster at that time when we talk about monochronic culture. Arriving on time is very important. Second, be kind to others. This is similar to the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But we can make that simpler, just be kind to others. Third. Listen to the teacher. Um, in American culture, it is very common for students to give the teacher an apple as a present. I don't know why, but this tradition has been going on for many, many decades. 
Um, my mother was a teacher, and she got many apples. I don't know why. But so this uh, apple, this picture, tells students, like, this is the one that's related to the teacher. And then finally, do your homework. Nice to the point. Ooh, this is a good one. Responsibility. This is also a very American kind of poster because it's teaching students that they are responsible for their actions. Um, it, it's this overall, overall idea that the teacher is not the only one who has to be responsible. Even children have to be responsible. And this is an ongoing theme that we will encounter several times in this class. So let's look at these four rules. The first one, be accountable for your words and actions. This phrase, be accountable for, um, that's maybe a little bit more complicated than something you would want to uh, expose elementary students to, but you could use this one, I think, maybe for middle school, certainly for high school students. But this idea that you need to be accountable for your actions, for your words, this is a very American way of thinking. And we do use these kind of rules with, you know, young children in America to sort of, you know, get them to um, believe that if they do something wrong, they should be punished, that there is always a, a reason for, um, you know, being punished or for the rules, and then also you need to be responsible for whatever you do. So even if you think you have a reason that doesn't make it okay to do something wrong, you always have to be accountable. Everyone should be accountable. Second, be in control of your behavior. So it's a similar idea to this first one. Be accountable, be in control. The third, think before you act, consider the consequences. I, I love this poster because it has so many of these um, phrases that we use in America to like convince children about the ways that we want them to think and act. Be accountable, be in control, think before you act, consider the consequences. These are phrases I often heard um, from my parents when I was growing up and from teachers, from principals when they were talking about behavior. They're serious phrases, they're phrases that adults use in you know, adult life, but they're relevant for teaching kids. And fourth, do what you're supposed to do. That, that one's very simple. And it, it covers a multitude of different actions, but it's very useful. Do what you're supposed to do. This one is very friendly looking, right? The focus is on overall being kind. Be kind to others. And then it's got a couple of other uh, different phrases all over the poster, but you can see they're all supporting this main theme, be kind to others. So forgive, right? Forgiveness is part of being kind. Cooperate, that's part of being kind. Value family, value relationships, include others, agree to disagree, have people skills, be fair, praise others. All of these things are related to being kind. So I like this one because it's so colorful and it's got these small little phrases all over that are useful, but it also has one main theme. So if you've got some students who are really low level and they just can't, you know, remember a lot of different English expressions, that's okay. They can follow the one main one, be kind to others. But then if you have higher level students, they can focus on all of the details as well. Next up, we've got this adorable poster. I like this one because it's very student-centered. So we have five different students here, and they are all saying what they will do. So this one doesn't have the teacher saying, obey me. It instead has the student's point of view, the student saying, I will do this. I will do what's right. So our first student says, I will always follow directions of adults around me. Second, I will always clean up after myself. I will keep my hands to myself. Remember in our first poster, we had the teacher saying, keep your hands to yourself. But here we have the student's perspective. I will keep my hands to myself. I will work safely and quietly in our school. I will be respectful of others and the environment. I really like this one because it could also be used as something to start your class with every day. 
So it's got the student perspective. These are things that you could have your students memorize or just read every day. So you could start your class by having students recite the rules. Everyone in the class can recite them. Very good language for your students to learn. And I like this uh, structure. I will do this. I will do this. So it's not the teacher ordering students. It's students saying, hey, I'm going to do what's right. Next up, before you speak, think. Now, this one is a play on the expression, think before you speak. This is something I also heard from my parents many, many times. Think before you speak. I heard it from teachers. Think before you speak. Sometimes I say this, too, to other people. Think before you speak, right? So don't say something stupid. Don't say something you're going to regret. Think first. So this is something we often tell children in America. Think before you speak. And on this poster, it sort of changed it. Before you speak, think. And what's cute is they've made an acrostic. So we have the common expression, but then for each letter, we have something more specific. T, is it true? If it's not true, don't say it. H, is it helpful? If it's not, then you don't say it. I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? Right. If it's not kind, don't say it. So for younger students, and I think even middle school students, a common problem is they are mean to other students. If you want to help decrease behavioral problems, if you want to make sure that there is no bullying in your class, then you could use a simple poster like this that focuses on what comes out of the students' mouths, right? Be truthful, be helpful, be inspiring, say things that are necessary, and always be kind. But this is all wrapped up in one phrase here, before you speak, think. Okay, this one is a little bit longer. We've got 10 rules, and they're all about having good manners. So first, say hello and goodbye. Say please, thank you, or excuse me. So here again, this is very much culturally related because in America, um, like even if you were talking to strangers and you bump into them, we would always say, excuse me. We always say please and thank you even to strangers. And this is related to a particular cultural value that we'll be learning um, maybe in week five or six. Third, be on time. Again, a very strong American value related to our monochronic culture, which we'll learn about later. Wait your turn, sit properly, ask before using, ask before moving. That means like don't get up out of your chair if the teacher didn't give you permission. Don't interrupt or yell out. This is related to pragmatics, which we will learn later in the semester. Um, one of the rules of conversation is not speaking over each other, taking turns. Nine, of course, don't swear, and ten, don't embarrass others. So these are some great rules. Um, ten might be too many for your students, but again, you could make your own poster, choose the ones that are most relevant for your students, and then just you know decorate it. All right, now we're going to look at an activity you can do in your class that exposes students to bits of other cultures. So. Um, a lot of you are probably thinking, I can't teach culture to my students. I have a book. I have to use the book. My principal makes me follow the book, or my Hagwan director makes me follow th this book. I have to do what's in the book. I can't, I can't do anything else. I can't teach culture. Well, that's not true, because culture doesn't have to be the whole focus of your lesson. There are easy ways to just insert a little bit of culture, expose students to culture through something as simple as pictures. This is probably our easiest activity this semester, so we're going to start with it. And this is how you're going to do it. You're going to find pictures from a target language magazine or other source. So if you have English magazines, you can find some pictures there. Or, of course, we can all just use the Internet. You prepare these pictures, and then students are going to pick a picture at random. The student presents an imaginary scenario to explain why the person is doing the action. And then answer this question. What basic need has motivated the behavior? And if you do your reading for this week, you will see how this is related to the topic of our first reading. I found a couple of pictures, so we're going to try this out. Here's a picture. Obviously, this is not occurring in Korea. So I found a picture of a foreign culture. 
And then you just show it to students and you ask students to explain what's happening, explain his behavior. Why is he running? Uh, I've looked at this many times and I have to say the first time I thought like maybe um, he was a criminal and he had a gun because I was looking at a small picture and when I saw this small picture, his right hand actually looks like a gun. But then later when I saw it on the big screen, I thought, oh, that's not the case. That's just his glove. So there could be a different explanation. Maybe he's got, uh, maybe he got a disease and the guys in the yellow are trying to grab him so that he doesn't spread the disease. So there are a variety of possibilities and I think your students could come up with some interesting different explanations. And so this is a way to get students talking, of course and also expose them to um, pictures from the target language uh, magazines or just pictures of other cultures and it's a way for them to be ve very creative explore their language and um, you know try to think from the other cultures point of view here's another one lots of students they all seem to be asleep I think maybe they're in a lecture hall, explain their behavior. Well, uh, maybe the professor is so boring that they all fell asleep. But it seems unlikely that they would all fall asleep. So I'm thinking like maybe they, um, they were poisoned. <laughs> maybe there was like some gas in the room and everybody fell asleep. So I don't know, but you could make your own guess and you could have your students do this as well. Third up, we've got these adorable little children and they seem to be spying what's on the other side right is this a house is this a wall who are they looking at what are they looking at so you could have your students make a guess last we've got this kid under the bed what happened so is he just taking a nap under the bed was he afraid did he think there were monsters under his bed and so he crawled under the bed hoping to escape and then he accidentally fell asleep I don't know. Uh, but this is an interesting one because it's so simple, but it does show a cultural difference because I think many children in Korea don't actually sleep on beds. They sleep on the floor. So they don't, you know, maybe have this option, but American uh, children are commonly afraid of things being under their bed. We think there could be monsters or spiders under the bed. So easy way to show a cultural difference. All right, finally each week we're going to try to improve your English. So today I'm going to show you an incorrect expression and then also show you the correct expression. But for future weeks, I want you to try before I tell you the answer. So this week on the discussion board, I'm putting up some phrases that I want you to try to correct. And then next week in the lecture, I'm going to tell you my way to correct them. So let's try these. I speak with good grammars. How could we correct this? Grammar. We don't say grammars. We just say grammar. Sally and I are intimate friends. Ooh, intimate is a tricky word. It can have more than one meaning. If you are intimate with someone, that means you are sleeping with them. It can also just mean close, but it's just not safe to use this word. So instead, close. Same problem here. I've heard my uh, TESOL students say this before. I want to be intimate with my students. No, I want to be close with my students. You should follow these rules. Please attention. Pay attention. This is something the teacher can say. Please pay attention. I need to learn many new vocabularies. Mm, not vocabularies. Vocabulary includes all of the words in a language. So we can just say new words or increase my vocabulary. My vocabulary includes all of the words I know. I feel difficult reading. Mm, not I. I feel reading is difficult or just reading is difficult for me. I've done that yet. We can't say yet here. I've done that, right? We use yet with negatives or with questions. We can say I've done that already.
She was pretty in a reel. So maybe you saw a celebrity in a movie and then you saw her at a restaurant and you want to say, when I saw her at the restaurant, she was still pretty. Not in a reel, but in reality or in real life. I like her, but she doesn't like me. Now this is a very simple fix. It's just a comma problem. And this is related to where we pause in the sentence. So I think this is a very Korean way of saying the sentence. I like her, but she doesn't like me. But in English, we would say, I like her, but she doesn't like me. The comma needs to go before the conjunction. There are so many slings, not slings, just slang. There's a lot of slang. We don't use plural. Let's see this picture. Remember earlier I showed you some pictures you could use with your students. But don't say, let's see this picture. We would say, look. Let's look at this picture. And finally today, I've prepared a comic strip for you. This is related to something that happened to me a few years ago in Korea. So in this comic, um, this little girl, that's me. And then uh, the man, he's a Korean man. So in this situation, I bring some cookies to the office. And then um, the man says to me, here, help yourself. Now this might seem like a very normal situation to you. However, in English, this situation doesn't make sense. And when it happened to me, I was very confused. So I want you this week to try to figure out what was confusing to me about this situation. And you can share your ideas on the discussion board. So today, to wrap up, we have talked about collecting English posters for your classroom. And don't forget, you could also make your own, but make sure the English is perfect. Use pictures as source material. And don't forget that you are the one that exposes your students to English. So you need to expose them to proper English. So please make an effort to improve your English in the classroom.